All right, we're at the 405 mark. And this is when I start feeling awkward <laughs> waiting for folks to come in. So I am ready to get started. I hope you are too. Um, for folks that don't know, my name is Stephanie and I am the founder of the Be Real Black Cinema Club. Um, we were founded back in 2017 with the um, interest in just exposing folks to independent black film. I'm not someone that knew really anything about it until I just went to BAM on a random and then I saw a flyer to go to BAM again, and I saw another flyer, and I went back to BAM and back to BAM and back to BAM and started being introduced to um, a lot of filmmakers I had never heard of, a lot of films that I thought, you know, I would never have access to. And so I was like, well, I ain't seen all the Black people in the theater with me, especially nobody under 50 that's Black. Um, so I started the film club, and we've been meeting up every month, almost every month, um, except for that one time in 2018 that we won't talk about. Um, <laughs> to just amplify um, filmmakers. And so not only do we have monthly meetups in Brooklyn, we also have me monthly meetups in Philly and now virtually thanks to the pandemic. It was definitely a blessing um, to the film club to be able to do this because now we can expand our reach beyond Brooklyn and Philadelphia. So with that, first of all, drop what city you're um, checking in from so we can see who's in the building. I'm reporting live from Philly today. Um, and it is hot and it is sunny and it's beautiful. Um, and while y'all are dropping your cities in, I'm very excited to um, be screening Jasmine as a star today. This has been on my wishes for a very, very long time. And I'm so excited that we're finally making it happen. Um, and we are not only going to be watching the film, we'll also be graced with the, pres the presence of its writer and director, Joe Rochelle. So please give the doll some love in the comments. Brooklyn in the building, Jersey in the building. Please do some emojis, some hearts, some some hey girl, hey, some something. Um, so welcome Joe Rochelle into the space. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to share the film with y'all. And you are um, coming from LA, streaming with mm -hmm. us from LA. What's LA giving? Is because I feel like it's hotter here than it yeah. is in LA these days. I think you're right. It, it's not so bad. I think it's like. It's not terrible weather today. I haven't been outside yet, though, so we'll see. Cool, cool. Well, without further ado, I would love for you to introduce yourself. I could read your bio, but I just feel like nobody can flex like you can when you talk about yourself. So I am passing the mic to you. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Joe Rochelle. Thank you for being with us today. I am currently based in Los Angeles. I am a filmmaker. I am a television writer. I write on the show Good Trouble that's on Freeform, but airs on Hulu the next day. And I am originally from Minneapolis, which is where Jasmine is a star takes place. So I'm really excited to share my hometown with you. It's a love letter to that city, but also to Black women and Black families. And it's very coming of age. And a lot of it is inspired by my childhood and my adolescence in Minneapolis. Awesome. So listen, if y'all love the purple rain and the Midwest yeah. vibes that that was giving, I'm very excited for y'all to see this. So a lot of times everything is so coastal, right? Like films are always so coastal. They're always in LA. They're always in New York. They're always in Atlanta. And, you know, anything that we can get from Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, I'm always excited about because, you know, those are Black stories that need to be told. So without further ado, y'all, here is Jasmine is a star. Six, five, four, three, two, one. To live, to be, to 
try to see this is what we have this is who we are i'm not waiting now i'm just laying here this is life just waiting for ya 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 we are the stars just so far in the heart now what the fuck is this life just waiting for ya we are the stars just so far in the heart now what the fuck is this life just waiting for ya We are the stars, just so we fall in the heart. The only fool is the fire, the light within the dark. We are the stars, just so we fall in the heart. The only fool is the fire, the light within the dark. We are the stars, just so we fall in the heart. The only fool is the fire, the light within the dark. We are the stars, just so we fall in the heart. The only fool is the fire, the light within the dark. To live, to be, to try to see this is what we have. This is who we are. I'm not waiting now. I'm just laying here. This is life, just waiting for ya. 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 We are the stars, just so we can make the world a better place. This is life, just waiting for ya. We are the stars, just so we can make the world a better place. Right, all right, y'all. Again, I'm back. I want to hear some shout outs. I want to hear some. I want to see. You want to hear. Ooh, see, it's a Sunday, y'all. <laughs> I want to see some stars. I want to see some hearts. I want to see all that for Jasmine is a star. That was everything. I don't know about y'all, but I thought it was everything. So I am super excited to um, stand to your face now um, because Jasmine is a star came, to, came across my desk, as I like to say. Um, via Black Star last year. Mm -hmm. um, so this has been literally almost a year that I've been looking forward to talking to you about the film. So um, let's get started. But before then, I just want to say if anybody that has any questions, feel free to drop down in the comment section. Um, and I will definitely make sure to um, ask your question. So um, first off, tell me about your Minneapolis. Yeah, so... My Minneapolis I was growing up with immigrant parents. My both of my parents are from Jamaica, actually. So they went to the coldest place they could find <laughs> in America. And they said, you know what? We're going to the Midwest. We're going to Minnesota where it snows and it's negative 40 degrees in the winter. <laughs> so it was pretty interesting growing up, you know, the daughter of immigrants, but also um, an American. So my Minneapolis is basically enjoying the great culture and theater that they have. They have such a great so many good actors live in Minnesota and people don't know that. And I love the school that I went to. And that's actually the school that's in the film. Oh, wow. Okay. The house that's Jasmine's house is my best friend's house in Minnesota. So I just reached out to my community. I was living in um, Joshua tree at the time in California. And I reached out to my Minnesota family to be able to find the locations for our film. And why was it so 
important to shoot the film in Minnesota because it, it could have been, you know, a girl in L.A. or a girl. Well, I don't know about a girl in Joshua Tree, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it could have been about a girl in L.A. or Nevada or wherever on that end of the world. Why did it have to be Minneapolis? I mean, I love Minneapolis and I think it's super important for filmmakers to tap into their community and their hometown, where they're from. There's just something magical that happens when you reach out to the community that like raised you, you know, they are willing to support you in ways where, um, you know, there's a lot of people filming stuff in Los Angeles. Not to say that I don't film things here because I do, but there's something so special about going home to film a project that's dear and near and personal to your heart. And so, um, like we were sharing, we were kind of talking offline, um, coming of age stories has been a running theme in our virtual screenings. Um, I don't know, maybe because I'm getting older and I'm like reminiscing on my like youth. I don't know. You know how you go through that thing when you turn, well, when you're over 35, that's what you do, y'all. You reminisce a lot. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I don't know if if that's just like an organic thing that happened or it's just where I am. But um, I love coming of age films so much because um there's just something about that time period of when you kind of turn into your first self um the best I can kind of describe it because I think you know we evolve over time even though at the core you may stay the same um and what I loved so much about Jasmine is she was just very clear and sure of who she was Mm -hmm. um so I'm wondering what were you like um in your like high school years at that high school, no less. <laughs> <laughs> right? Taking it back. I mean, I realize now that I, I'm very much, I was like Jasmine. I did pageants. I watched America's Next Top Model. But I didn't necessarily want to be a model. I just knew I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. Like that I was clear on. I did plays. I did musicals. Loved the just being a part of the drama department in my high school. And so I feel like I found my path as an adult into like, okay, I'm a writer and I'm a director, but I definitely was always interested in stories. I loved reading books as a teenager and I love writing teenage voices. I really do. I still try to keep in touch, though I'm in my thirties as well. I'm like, I got to keep in touch with what the teens are up to. Let me get on this TikTok real quick. (laughs) Let me look through. What are they saying these days? What are they into? Because I find that teenagers are so important. They, they are so important and we shouldn't disregard them as a society at all. Like what they feel, they feel so passionately about. Some of them are so smart and some of them can change the world. So I love writing for teenagers. I love that. Cause they're also too, I feel like a lot of people um, put a lot on to our young people, mm-hmm. but don't really, how can I say this? I feel like the, the film was written like someone that actually loves and listens to young people. Mm. Um, So you saying that really made a lot of sense because I think a lot of films, um, there is one that is in my head right now. Whatever, it's my platform, I can say it. What was that film with the bones, Eat the Bones? Mm. Taylor Russell that recently came out. Anyway, that film, in theory, could have been amazing, but I felt like it was written by an adult that wanted to impose their thoughts on, on teens and young people. Um, and so your film was just really sweet because it just felt like someone who actually has a level of care and not trying to um, uh, like preach to young people or give a message to young people, but more so just kind of bring to life their everyday, their feelings, their interests, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it just makes the film like really, really special. Um so you're saying that you love to tell stories. And I always ask every filmmaker this, why this particular story and why now? That's a great question. So that brings me back to like 2018, I started writing it. In 2019, we started filming it. And 2020 was a pandemic and all that happened with George Floyd in Minnesota, my hometown. So it's been a journey. But I would say why this story is I always wanted to tell something that's personal about a Black family in Minnesota. Um, about a young black girl who's interested in being in the entertainment industry like myself. And when I was doing my research, I came across, you know, people with albinism, a young girl named Diana Lachey who plays Jasmine had a YouTube channel and she was doing hair tutorials and doing like, she was just so natural with the camera. I was like, I wonder if I could get her or someone like her to Mm -hmm. play Jasmine, which means the script needs to accurately reflect that. 
I need to do my research. I need to talk to people in person and sit down with them. I need to do test screenings. I need to talk to people with albinism, but also make sure that I'm also getting the teen voice right. Like there's so many different um, angles to look at it from. And I'm thankful that she she never acted in anything before, but she was like, yes, <laughs> I would love to. She She's said, so not natural. She's so natural. And I was like, girl, you can do this. And so <laughs> that's how our relationship began, I think in 2019, early 2019. And so, yeah, it's just been a great journey. But that is the, that's the why now is that I think people need the message of like, don't wait for permission, just go for it. Just do mm -hmm. something. That's what I did with this film. I didn't have um, a studio behind me, right? It's an independent film, had to crowdfund, but never give up and just go for it like Jasmine does in the movie. Um, and I have a lot of notes, so I'm gonna I'm trying to like not take up and monopolize the question time just case anyone in the, in the audience has questions. But um, I love that you talked about the resource uh, research portion because so my um, my little cousin um, has albinism, and I feel like it's not talked about a lot. Like I don't know, you know, how, like black people, we will like notice something, but we may not talk about it. But it's some sometimes I feel like it's it's okay, like, okay, we're not othering the person, but it's also worth talking about just to have knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So I love that um, in the scene where her mom is visiting, I'm assuming with the principal and kind of like her wraparound, I don't know, we mm -hmm. call them wraparounds in Philly, um, and it talks about her vision because a lot of people assume that if you have albinism, it really is just about the, the pigment of your skin, right. um, you not having melanin, but it also affects your vision. And I love that, you added that component to the film and not in like a, a like cheese way, but in a way of like, this is a really a thing. And like, as a teenager, you want to drive, you mm -hmm. know? And mm -hmm. like, she can't drive because, you know, if you have albinism, you um, for the most part will be legally blind. So um, I really, really love that inclusion in the film. Um, that's definitely something that, you know, um, my little cousin was, you know, adamant about. So that was awesome. I love that so much. Um, but to that scene, and what I noticed with her parents as well is this kind of um, overcompensating as a form of protection. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to, you know, hear you talk a little bit more about building out Jasmine's world and the adults in her world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's common to see some parents when their child has something that sets them apart a little bit to kind of overprotect a little, or at least watch out for them. You don't want the world to hurt them. You want to keep them mm -hmm. in a safe bubble. And I love that Jasmine's parents are so supportive of her dream mm -hmm. going into the arts. Like some, some parents hear their child say, I want to be a model. And they're like, mm -mm. right. <laughs> Mary, you better go to nursing school. You better go down to the post office. <laughs> get you a <laughs> city job. <laughs> exactly. So it was important for me to show these two parents who actually do believe she can make it. And they think she could be a supermodel someday. But at the same time, you were 16, you know? So we're going to watch out for you. And maybe crossing the line a little too far at times and maybe not giving her a chance to speak up for herself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's interesting conflict there because 16 is like, you're not an adult yet, but you almost are. And I wanted people to debate whether the father was right or not to stop that photo shoot just because he felt uncomfortable. She said she didn't. Mm -hmm. Is it his role to do that or not? I wanted that to be a question for the audience to answer themselves. I love the tension of that scene because mm -hmm. as it was going along, I was kind of like, hold on, what's going on here? Because they kept saying, you're an alien. So I'm like, mm, <laughs> this feels like some like shady casting. And then when the casting director was like, oh, we would have, this is what the scene was. We would have cast anyone. We just happened to cast Jasmine. And the dad was like, not nah, baking that. He's like, absolutely not. That's not what's going on. You know? <laughs> but that's such a hard line. That's like when something happens, you're like, mm -hmm. somebody just told me a hard R. Was that racist? Mm -hmm. Or was it literally just like, you're just a rude person? Or, you know what I mean? Yep. So I love the tension of that scene and that you left it up to us to kind of decide what was happening and how we felt about it and how we were processed in that moment as well. Mm -hmm. Um but to that point, so the fashion industry, and I worked in fashion for a really long time before I transitioned to museums where I work now. And I've always been obsessed with fashion, very much was watching Fashion Network, E, all that stuff in the 90s, 2000s when I was coming up, you know, all the magazines. And I remember 
how there will be like waves of like looks, like what yeah. what the in look was. And so like in the early 2000s, Alec Wack like ushered in the like mm -hmm. black women with the fade vibe. Yeah. And then there was the, um, the Afro Dominican wave that mm -hmm. came um, and then there was, um, where are we? I mean, oh, well, right now we're very much, uh, heavy in the South Sudanese wave. So like all the big models are, are South Sudanese. And so it's weird in fashion that someone who can normally be, um, considered other is beautiful in nice. the industry, but then because these things go in waves, it also feels um like trendy and like you're easily like disposable you know in a way mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and so i love that addition of the advice throughout the film and mm -hmm. would love to hear you talk about why you wanted to include that and specifically a lot of the things that were said that were um in the in the kind of i guess youtube videos that she mm -hmm. was watching. you know what's funny is those youtube videos those podcast voices that was not originally in the script so when we were all filming on set, that was not something that anyone knew was going to be a part of the story. It was when I sat down during that long period of time in post-production because the pandemic had started. George Floyd had been murdered. It was a it was a time to like put the film aside for a second and just be a person. When I came back to it, I had a totally different perspective on it. And I was able to think about like, OK, what would be like a narrative force to drive the film forward? but also to show you how dedicated Jasmine is to this. Like mm. she's not playing, this is her life. <laughs> she is so serious about this, that she's in an Uber. She's in a Lyft listening to it. You know, she's going to be in her house listening Still to it. her mama credit card. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I, I think that helped also like finding the film in the edit and mm. trusting what I got on set, but seeing, can I enhance it even more in post-production? Amazing. Um, so also too, I struggle a lot with like the idea of representation. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of it was wrapped up in the fact that I didn't realize that the way a black child, um, grew up in the nineties, eighties, nineties was representation. We just never said the word. It was just mm -hmm. everywhere. And it was like, Oh, okay. Um, but a lot of representation I feel like now is so, um, outward facing like everyone's like well I'm not seeing myself in media so I don't feel xyz mm -hmm. um instead of what I think was the good part about being a teenager in the 80s 90s early 2000s is we just had community to look at right we yeah. didn't, I mean obviously we had an overabundance at that time of images and tv and media but we also had community to look at mm -hmm. um and so which a lot of these kids may not have because you know People are no longer living in the communities that their third, four generations are living in. And people, you know, are all over the world now. And so there's um, the connection to community isn't the same for a lot of our young people as it was with us. Um, and so I love the inclusion of her just running into um, this guy, the college student that also had albinism. And so um, mm -hmm. I, I would love to hear a little bit about that kind of dynamic because you didn't um, talk a lot about like, or we didn't see Jasmine like looking at magazines or looking mm -hmm. on Instagram too much, um, but she found that kinship in IRL, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Yeah, I love that. You talked about a sense of community and running into people. I feel like that happens a lot in life. Even when I lived in New York City, I went to college there. You'd be surprised how many people you'd see down the street. You're like, hey, I haven't seen you in a year. I love those moments in life. And I love that her friend asks her, like, what would you do if you ever met a boy who was like you? Like, would you be into it? Would you not? And she's like, of course, if I met one. But it's so rare. You know, I think one in 18,000 people have it. So I love the idea of it being like a happy kind of fate coincidence. Just when she needs encouragement the most, because she's in kind of a lower point. She lost the photo mm -hmm. shoot. It would be amazing to see someone who looks like her who could just talk to her IRL mm -hmm. and um, be a connection for her, be a mentor for her and be a friend to her in that moment. So I also knew that I wanted to have two black people in this movie who had albinism, not just one. So that that's kind of how it all came together. And why did you, um, why did you want to have two and not just Jasmine? 
I guess when it comes to the question of representation and knowing that this movie is for everyone and this movie could relate to everyone, like people have been through experiences like this where you've wanted a dream so badly and you wanted to achieve it, but like obstacles came in the way. Like almost every human being has experienced that. But at the same time, I know that people with albinism specifically haven't had a ton of positive representation. You know, there's a lot of media that depicts them as the villains of the story, like in a superhero story or something. They're the villains or they're being made fun of and not just regular person. So I knew if there's an opportunity to have a young woman and a young man, that would be incredible. So I wrote it in. <laughs> Love it. Um, I don't see any um, questions in the comments. So I'm going to keep rolling um, and then we can start wrapping up. But I love this scene. And I'm usually not like, I'm an only child. Me and my mom, my mom's a single parent. So obviously we are close because we have to. Um, so I'm, I usually am not one of somebody that's really sentimental about mother-daughter moments. But I do so much love that scene where the mom is telling the story and you're like, girl, where is this going? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and she says to Jasmine, you're the kind of girl that would never look back. You're always looking towards the finish line. Mm -hmm. And as a writer, talk to us about that. Because that was like, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that is my mother's actual story. It just wow. came out. It just came out. And I talked to her about it. And she was like, yeah, <laughs> it's her actual story. She's told me countless times my husband has heard the story countless times when he goes to Minnesota and sees my mom because it was like a traumatic experience for her to be young she was in Jamaica and it was a race that was gonna like get her to this really like top prep school that would maybe would have changed her life and she looked back and she just saw the girl just run right past her and she's like till this day she's like don't do that don't be like me mm. Keep your eye on the finish line don't look to the left don't look to the right and that's a life lesson and I felt like it was so important for Jasmine to hear that. Like her mother in some ways admires her. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? She's like, look at you. You are the type of girl who does who would never look back. And I want that for you. And I, that's so special. And I wanted to pay, you know, a little tribute to my mom in there. Cause she mm -hmm. has encouraged me so much. She's like one of my role models. I love her so much. And she's an incredible woman who's gone through so much to bring her whole family mm -hmm. from Jamaica to Minnesota. So we can have a better future. And so, yeah, that's my mom's story. And I, I do tend to love those mother-daughter moments where they're connecting. Because for so long, Jasmine's mother's trying to take her eyelashes. Like, why are you trying to be like other girls? <laughs> <laughs> and then for her to pull her eyelashes off and give them to her mom just to be on the same page. Because teenagers, mm -hmm. you can have it tough when we're younger with our moms. We can <laughs> really get into some arguments there. You know, no matter how good the relationship is it can be tense mm. and I wanted to show that too but I wanted to show that moment of connection between them and I love it when she passed her lashes and gets off the car her mom's like love you too because <laughs> it's really that silent thing of like mom I heard you yes you know? um so I love that 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 nugget that that's actually your mom's story another nugget that I love and I love little small little details in films that people may not notice um, when she looks up and sees um, Zora Neale, the, the painting mm -hmm. of Zora Neale Hurston. Mm -hmm. um, and I just finished um, her book of essays, You Don't Know Us Negroes. Mm -hmm. And Zora was a piece of work, but Zora was very sure of herself mm -hmm. in a time when, like, of course, Black people amongst our own community can be that way, but, mm -hmm. like, in the world could not be so, you know? And for, I mean, Zora was, was, uh, herself in sometimes ways that may have like turned folks off, but I always admired it because she's just mm -hmm. like, this is me, this is you getting this is it, period. And Jasmine is that same way, you know, not in much of a you gonna deal with me kind of way, but I know who I am, I'm clear on who I am, and I'm always going to show up as myself. So that little nugget was just so cool to me, and I love that, and I appreciated that. But I would mm -hmm. love to know the origin of it. You know what's funny? So that's my high school. So when I was Jasmine's age, I think that Zora thing was still there. And so when I came back, <laughs> I was like, Zora, still here? <laughs> We're using this. So <laughs> that was like on set. We're going to use this. Jasmine, stop right here. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I remember seeing that because we had a Zora unit. I mean, I went to a predominantly white school in Minnesota, but I will give them credit for giving us a Zora unit. And we read Their Eyes Are Watching God. We mm -hmm. read so many different things. And we watched the movies and we watched adaptations. And we talked about her and her as a filmmaker, too, in some ways. Mm. So I think somehow life came full circle. 
I was able to be a filmmaker now, standing in front of that same portrait where I was 15 years old, a sophomore, looking at it, and have Jasmine stand there and look in front of it and even kind of find inspiration for a photo shoot out of it. Oh, that is awesome. I love, 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 love that story. <laughs> um, so a quick, like, technical thing. Normally, I try to, you know, keep it as non-technical or academic as possible, but I would love to hear the connection between yourself and Black Star. So Black Star mm -hmm. was a big part of Film Club starting. It was the first film festival I'd ever been to. Um, and the fact it was in my hometown felt special because, you know, a lot of times like film things, if you're not in that world, can just feel hmm, like you're not invited, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm always going to give love to Black Star. So definitely want to hear about that connection. Yes, I love Black Star Film Festival. Going last August, I believe, was my first time ever attending the festival. They are the best. They're incredible. You know, they like really I welcome the crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're incredible. And they, they had um, Ayana come to and we got to do a panel and talk to them. And so, yeah, I just applied regularly to the festival. I had applied. It was my second time applying, my first time getting in. So like the mm -hmm. first thing I ever applied with was years ago, I made a short film about a black mermaid. And it didn't get into Black Star, but it went to other festivals and I had a great festival run and enjoyed it. But I was like, one day I would love to get into Black Star. <laughs> and then Jasmine got in and it was just a lovely experience. Like we had so much fun and the audience, just to hear the Black audience responding to this project in ways like that are different from other audiences. Like everyone finds something, but there were subtle things. Like when Jasmine walks in, to her mom's room because her mom called for her and she says what and her mom just looks at her people are like her? Really had a response to that exactly <laughs> like you can't do that <laughs> just little things like that it was so fun and just how they laughed so hard when the dad was dancing and they started mm -hmm. clapping they laughed so hard they started clapping in the middle of the movie i could not have been happier um another thing when she was walking in them boots i put in the comments strut mamas Cause she went to New Boy. She said, "I am Mary J. Blige, baby." <laughs> you really did though. <laughs> I love that. Um, and so I guess we can wrap with talking about the final scene. I mm -hmm. love the final scene so much. That's why that photo is was the graphic for um, um, for the post about the screening today. Because first of all, she in the people close. <laughs> that she yep. was like. I have to get these back. And her <laughs> shoot looked way better than the yes. shoot that she was on. Um, and it just felt like this moment of Jasmine being like, nothing is going to stop me. And not only is nothing going to stop me, I'm about to like be on next about mm -hmm. it as well. And just her just her confidence throughout the film was just everything to me because for teenagers now, and I used to formally work with young people up until last year, it's tough. Like the things they're grappling with are not, I'm not going to say worse, but it's just different than what we had, you know? And so to walk around this world as confident as she is, is just so sweet to see, you know? Mm -hmm. And she has every reason to like, be like, F this. Like, her crush is hugging on some other girl. Her parents is on her nerves. Her homegirl on her nerves. You know, <laughs> she's not meeting other people like her. You know, there's so many things that she could just be so um, in, in within herself, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that scene was just beautiful. And I know I said no technical questions, but <laughs> mm -hmm. um, just want to hear about the setup of that scene, how you all came to that scene. Um, and she was just eating them angles up. <laughs> I know. I mean, all credit goes to Ayanna Lachey for the angles because I, I don't think you can direct that for someone who mm -hmm. can't just, you can't bring that out of somebody. They have to just have that within them. She knows her angles because she really is a model in real life. So yes, that scene is so special to me. I knew that I wanted the movie to end on a triumphant note, but not because other people gave her the triumph. It's got to come from within. And like, yeah, she stole their leggings. <laughs> she stole it. She just kept it. She was not returning it. And I love that you said that the photo shoot looks better than what they had in mind with the little purple wig and the, you know, she in had some in the background. I was like, this is whack. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like she had something really going that she did all by herself. She has a vision 
and she's mm. extremely talented and she will be successful. It's just kind of what the end of the movie gives you hints of when you see people clapping, she's walking, she's on photo shoots. You're like, okay, she's going to make it on her own terms. So yeah, the setup of that, I want to give credit to my cinematographer, Anoop Kulkarni, because we were going to, we had, we bought on Amazon, like a little light that flickers and shows like a background on a wall, but he was like, we need a projector. So we got a real projector and streamed like YouTube videos of the galaxy behind her. And that little light that she has is not really what's giving you that. It's the projector. Mm. <laughs> he was like, you need something more. You need it to be stunning. This is the end of your movie. And I was like, you're right. Mm -hmm. So that was like some of the technical setup. It was only four people that day on set. It was me, my husband, who was a producer and a production designer. He built the flower that Jasmine was in and he helped set up the projector mm. and everything our cinematographer Anoop and Ayana Jasmine, four people in an apartment pulled off the <laughs> opening and closing scenes on regular days on set. We had like 30 people, but that it's day was on. just that. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was beautiful and the perfect way to end the, the film. Um, so I always wrap with this question. How can we continue to support you? Because that is the point of the film club. Like, mm -hmm. this is not about, like, me at all. This isn't about us hanging out and going to get drinks afterwards. It's about how we can continue to support independent Black filmmakers. Um, I know you'll be at, the film will be at BAM May 1st. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody keep your eyes peeled because I might got something for y'all um, mm -hmm. May 1st. But um, what are some other ways we can continue to support? So you can support by joining our email newsletter at jasminestarmovie.com. So we have a, a newsletter we send out. Here are our upcoming screenings. Here's the awards that we've been winning or things like that. We let people know about that. And then me personally, you can find me on Instagram at the Joe Rochelle. So just my name with the in front of it. And I post there and, you know, keep people updated on the shows that I'm working on and my future projects. I've already made another short film since Jasmine. And I want to direct another feature next year. Nice. Can you tell us anything about the short? Or yes, we need to yes. wait. Because I, I always wait. What's next? Because I'd be <laughs> like, people ask me. I'm like, child, I don't know. So <laughs> I like, like this is something. You brought it up. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So I made a short last November that's currently in the post production process, and it's about a black family again, and it's also got another teenage girl, and this one's very rebellious because her dad is a pastor, and the mm. family business is kind of being in church. And she's kind of in her rebellious phase right now. And that's what I'll say about that. Well, I'm just going to put our bid in for mm -hmm. whenever it's out into the world. You know, we could do another little run it back one more yeah. time for the one time. <laughs> um, and then my final, final question is, if you could just share with us some Black filmmakers that you love and some Black films that you think we need to watch. Oh, my gosh. So many. You know who has been making some shorts and is on her way to making another feature is... Felicia Pride, you may know her. Our doll, Fel Felicia I love may actually have been one of our first our first uh, quarantine screenings. So we did Tender. I love Tender. Thanks. I love Felicia. She has her next film, Look Back at It. It's currently going to festivals. We're both going to Atlanta Film Festival next week. Nice. So she is just such an inspiration to me. Like there are so many people on the come up, like Felicia Pride and Winter Dunn. Yes. Winter has Dear Mama. These are yes. my, I love them. I love, anytime I see them doing anything, I go, <laughs> I support, I click, <laughs> I buy. <laughs> so they're two filmmakers that are just inspiring me. I love Black women filmmakers. Same, same. Are there any films that you want to have us put in our queue before we get out of here? Hmm. I mean, you know, a film that's been um, talked about for a while, that uh, is, um, shoot, I'm not remembering the name of it though. I haven't seen it yet, so I not not yet, but I'll let okay. you know. <laughs> right? I'm like, maybe I shouldn't recommend something I haven't seen yet and can't remember the name of. <laughs> well, with that, we thank you so, so, so much. Um, we are looking forward to um, all the successes that are already coming your way that just have yet to be revealed. We will be here cheering you on. We were super excited again. Like I said, I've been, this has been on my list mm -hmm. for the longest. I'm so glad we were able to make this happen. And we'll continue to support in all the ways. And have a great weekend or week at um the Atlanta Film Festival. I'm so sick. I went to college in Atlanta. So anytime I can go, I, I sneak down. And I mm -hmm. was trying to make it happen. But, you know, I had to be an adult and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you have an awesome time. Um, You know, 
get some awards. And if you don't, you'll start to us, just like Jasmine. So <laughs> thank, thank you, you so you. much. <laughs> this is so fun. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>